Welcome back to Pesci's Kitchen. Today we come together to celebrate the essence of Thanksgiving, a time to express gratitude for family, friends, good health, and all the positive aspects of our lives. Join us as we recap the final meal preparations for our special dinner tonight. Let's savor the joy of giving thanks together. As we begin part two of a series we entitled the full Thanksgiving prep video. But before we get started, before we get started, I want to talk about what Thanksgiving is all about. And my coffee mug says it all. It's one of my favorite coffee mugs because it talks about beginning each day with a grateful heart. And today, I want to say cheers to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for this community. So much has changed, so much has happened, and we continue to grow every single week. And I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, from my cameraman's heart, from my daughter who helps me with prep, Everyone here at Pesci's Kitchen wants to say Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you for tuning in to our video. Today's going to be an easy day. And as the Thanksgiving messages start to roll in from friends and family, I just want to take a moment and pause and say thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. We will try to include chapters. I'll go back over the next couple of weeks and I'll include chapters down below so that you can skip around to the different recipes we've created. Everything's done. So we're literally gonna be just putting it in the oven and getting everything cooked. Now there's a certain flow to that, but before we get started, here's what I want you to do. I want you to subscribe. If you're new to this community, we have thousands of people that tune in every single week to Pesci's Kitchen. I want you to be part of this growing community because as we get bigger and bigger, more and more things are gonna happen and we want you to be part of those exciting events. One of my favorite books of all times is this book right here. This book has gone everywhere I have gone over the years and it's a great book. And if you can read that correctly, it does say the Flavor Bible. But this book is extraordinary. Hey, let's see if we can get a zoom in on this book. Let's try to get this. What I like about this book is it tells you everything that pairs well with every ingredient you can imagine. In this book, everything is in alphabetical order. And so for instance, our honey ham inspired by the flavors in the flavor bible are coming out of this book so i'll put a link in the description to where you can find this book i'll put it on amazon i also encourage you get the one with the the wine it talks about all the different ways you can pair wine with food and so forth just a great great book and will something will be a book that i cherish for the rest of my life because like i said it's my favorite all-time cookbook of all time. Just get your face. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oof, that's stiff. We are gonna start out with the turkey. We're gonna move this right over here. All right, so we're gonna start with the bird. It's nice and dry. The baking powder dried it out. The salt kind of tenderized it, also drawed out a lot of that moisture. Now we're gonna put this in a 450 degree oven. All right, our turkey's in the oven. Let's go ahead and pull out the ham. And before we get started, what I want to do with the ham is I want to take all of the remaining mustard that came out and I want to rebaste 
all layers as much as possible. Okay. Ham's going to go in the oven. We're going to make the glaze. And as we make the glaze, the ham will cook. We'll pull the ham out. We'll glaze it. Put it back in the oven. Let it crisp. Let it crisp and get nice and hot. You'll see the whole process, and you're going to be quite shocked how well this turns out. So again, just rehydrate that ham with that Coleman's mustard. All right, let's go put it in the oven. Remember, ham is already cooked. Um, let's do a little rotation. Just stay right there. Hold this out. Ham's already cooked. All we're doing is reheating that ham, okay? So let's go to the cutting board end and let's make the secret glaze. All right, so what I wanna show you is that our ham came with an already packet of, it's called sugar honey flavored glaze. Sounds appetizing. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. It looks like crap. It smells artificial, but it looks like crap. So, I'm gonna show you how to take this and turn it into this. Let's start with some dark brown sugar. We're gonna add in about a cup. We're gonna add in about a teaspoon of garlic powder. That looks like a teaspoon. Teaspoon of coriander, dried coriander. What is the fresh coriander called? Cilantro. Cilantro. So about a teaspoon of that as well. Add in a teaspoon of my secret spice. It's called Chinese Five Spice. Okay. Mmm, smell it. It's nice and aromatic. All right, we're gonna add in some stone ground Dijon mustard, okay? We're gonna add about three tablespoons. Oh, one, two, three. We're gonna add in some of our cinnamon whiskey. Mm. About a cup. And we're gonna add some spicy hot honey. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of Mike's, speaking of the devil, Mike's hot honey. About a tablespoon. And that's just gonna add some heat. And we'll give that a mix. Now, how much better does that look over the stuff I just showed you that came in that packet? Smell that whiskey. Look at that. Let's taste it. Now this is gonna be strong because we have whiskey. Woo! Wow. The spicy hot honey hits you, but it's easily reduced down by the sweetness of the brown sugar. Dijon mustard, those spices. All right, now that is a brown sugar spice. It won't be that spicy because when you cook it, the heat will cook down. Yum, yum, yum. All right, turkey's in the oven, ham's in the oven. It's about to come out and get its first dressing of the glaze we just made. We're going to go ahead and drain the liquid from our potatoes. I'm going to refill them up with some water. And here we go. Lid on. We're going to pressure cook it for 15 minutes.
we'll hit start. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and pull out our ham out of the oven. Remember, that ham is already cooked. We're just reheating it up now. And now all we're gonna do, okay, you can already see the ham is starting to open up. We're just gonna glaze the ham with our glaze that we just made. We're gonna do this multiple times until this caramelizes and crisps up on the ham. Get in between those layers so that when you serve it, you get a bite of the flavor with every bite you of the ham. Again, fill those crevices with your glaze. Don't forget to get the front. And then back in the oven we go. We're gonna do that on and off, three, four, five times until we see that it's nice and crispy and we see that glaze is starting to caramelize. All right, as you can see, the ham is starting to take a like. Now, one thing you can do to prevent the burning is cover it with foil. We're just gonna continue with the basting process, creating a nice glaze and crust on top. You're gonna get a lot of leakage out. That's normal. What we want to create is a candy light baked ham. That way when you take a slice, you have a bite of that glaze in every mouthful. We're gonna do some improvisation here. I went ahead and melted some ghee. You can use butter for this, but I'm gonna use ghee just because it has a higher smoke point. I've melted it. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of salt, cracked black pepper, and any kind of barbecue rub, just a little bit. And we'll give that a mix. This is going to act as a glaze that's going to go on top of our turkey. It's gonna help caramelize it and crisp up that skin. And fat is flavor at the end of the day, so it's just gonna help moisten that bird a little bit better. Okay, and put it back in the oven. Now I went ahead and I pulled the ham out just so that we don't overcook the ham, okay? We've got about five minutes left on the pressure cooker. We'll get our potatoes mashed. You're gonna need a stand mixer for this part and a wire whisk attachment. So our potatoes are nice and fork tender, or at least they should be. They've been cooking for 15 minutes on our pressure cooker. All right, we're done. Depressurized, pull this out. You want the best mashed potatoes? I'm gonna show you how. Put them in a stand mixer. Whisk attachment. We're gonna pump air into it. The whisk attachment's also gonna break up these mashed potatoes, or these potatoes as well, and turn them into mashed potatoes. Start on low. All right, and then we're gonna go over to the fridge, we're gonna get some ingredients. First one's first. We need butter, and a lot of it. Grab about a stick and a half for the butter. You take the first stick and just throw it in there, and the steam will melt those potatoes. Same, same thing with that butter. You grab some sour cream, and if we have it, which we do, some heavy whipping cream. You already see, it's starting to turn into mashed potatoes. Well, let's stop it first. Add in about 
quarter of a cup of sour cream. This is going to help make your potatoes more creamier. We'll go ahead and add in some heavy cream, about an eighth of a cup. Okay. Let's get some salt and pepper in there. Now my recommendation anytime you season any of your food is to make sure that you season it to your liking. So we all can tolerate salt differently. Once you over salt something, it's very hard to fix it, if, if at all possible to fix it. So I recommend you add a little bit of salt and taste and then adjust from there. Okay, we'll turn that on high. Now this is where the real magic happens. We're gonna pump this with lots of air. All right, we're gonna stop it and we're gonna taste it. You can see how creamy that is. Just by looking at this, you know, it stays on the spoon. Okay, definitely needs more pepper. Definitely needs a little bit more salt. And we'll mix. Stop it. Take a look at that. We're getting there on the salt. I think it just needs a tad more. But you see how I stop? Season, mix, and taste. That should be enough. Now you know why chefs are never hungry after the meal because they are sitting around just tasting everything. That's perfect. All right, so we're gonna remove it off the stand mixer. We'll head back to the cutting board. Right, we're gonna go ahead and just add this into the baking pan. And we'll heat, put this in the oven so it stays nice and hot. You can see how creamy, light, and fluffy. Fluffy. Laffy. Those potatoes are. And put it in the oven until it's ready to be served. And then come with me to the, we're gonna pull out our sweet potato casserole with our homemade marshmallow topping. And we're gonna put those in the oven, let those heat up, the casserole, and we're almost done. We're almost ready to start plating. All right, now comes the fun part. Everything is in the oven heating up. We're gonna go ahead and carve off this turkey. We're gonna split right down the middle. You can already see how juicy this is. Look at that. And we got some bone on there still. That's okay, we can cut that off. Perfect. Save that for me, for Max. Instead of using a chef's knife, I'm gonna use a serrated knife, okay? We're gonna go in, just start making our slices. And look at that. Perfectly cooked, tenderized. You can see the, the juice still in there. It's nice and tenderized, okay? Thank you for joining us as we wrapped up Thanksgiving 2023. Streamlining the full meal preparation allows you to enjoy quality time with friends and family over the course of two days without compromising the taste of the final meal. If you found our meal preparation tips valuable, kindly express your appreciation by hitting that like button. We look forward to having you join us in our upcoming videos. Until then, happy cooking and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.